He started with me already. It's been a tough year in showbiz. We've had our share of setbacks. We lost Harry Morgan, Peter Falk, Liz Taylor, the Jersey Shore returned to TV. Don't forget Charlie Callis. <coughs> Notice who's talking about calluses. There we go. <laughs> and even in our secluded valley community, we are not immune to loss. Greg Corrin is heading to greener pastures. Yay! In the friggin' desert! Yeah. So as we wish him well, let's take the opportunity to take a few cheap shots at him on his way out the door. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Greg Corrin! Tiny, sit down. <laughs> this isn't the Jerry Lewis telethon. Although, with the way you act, it could be. Oh, oh it's a fucking rose! <laughs> there we go, he dropped the first F bomb. It's I fair game. Everybody take a drink! <laughs> first, I want to apologize to you, Greg, Keith, whatever your fucking name is. <laughs> Not for all the insults you'll get tonight about being fat or talentless, that's all true. <laughs> But I want to apologize for this dais. We wanted to throw you a great send-off in this pathetic cavalcade of has-beens and never wers the best we could come up with. Seriously, you know it's bad when Paul Wynarski is the biggest name on the dais. There's more, damn it. And that's only because we're using Scrabble scoring. So, Greg, sit back, relax, and watch these hacks do what they do best. Die on stage. <laughs> Our first roast of the evening is Jeff Bohm. Jeff Bohm and I have been friends for several years, despite the restraining order. <laughs> At first, I was afraid we wouldn't get along. I mean, one of us is a neurotic, egotistical drunk. And the other is me. <laughs> so here he is, the biggest little guy in show business, Jeff Bone. That's gonna suck. I can't adjust the mic. Imagine that. Where's my fucking booster seat? <laughs> Sit on my left. Just grab it and put it in your mouth. Don't forget to cut the balls. I couldn't. I don't want any Sandusky jokes tonight. I'm not to... Ooh. Thank you. Hey, how do you know it's bedtime in the Sandusky household? When the big hand touches the little hand. Oh. <laughs> Too soon? You're fucking over it. I think I'm getting shorter. I'm okay. Uh, I saw a lot of people coming in tonight. I, I, just, I just thought to myself, look at this crowd here, you know. I haven't seen so many untalented actors, musicians, and writers crammed into a Scranton fire trap since the first night. <laughs> Hi, Paige. <laughs> Where's K.K. Gordon? He... Wow, I guess he didn't uh, sell enough blood this week to make the $10 rent on <laughs> You know, he always, uh, he always tells me that he got into uh, to playwriting uh, because he saw my play Charlie Chaplin's Body perform once, and um, I was so touched. Thank you for that, Greg. Go for it. Um, I said, uh, I was so touched that he, uh, he went into playwriting because of Charlie Chaplin's Body. I said, next time, uh, try fucking cro crocheting. Let me take that again. <laughs> you try it, drunks. <laughs> he has a fascination with uh, the, the undead, that boy, um, and it led to a bad Halloween this year. He wanted to go as a zombie, a man in Knox, and the bitch ended up living. <laughs> <laughs> like you're related to her. Come on. <laughs> Bob Hughes. Bob Hughes couldn't make it tonight either. Oh, oh, thank God. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> How do you feel about oh. that, Tom? <laughs> You know Bob, the star of Purgatorial Diaries? Uh, yeah, he bears a strike resemblance to Jason Miller. After he threw down in, uh, himself down the stairs in the fucking exorcist. <laughs> Speaking of Jason Miller, um, did anybody see Rebecca Marshall's documentary on WVIA? Anybody? Yeah, I didn't yeah. see that. I haven't seen something so sad and fucked up since PBS, uh, on PBS since uh, Mr. Hooper croaked on Sesame Street. <laughs> 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 I saw E.J. Dewar before Christmas, so that's always a treat. 
he couldn't be here, but he, uh, he censors your cards, so he really does, okay? Yeah, yeah. I don't know if y'all know him, but he's a famous DJ locally, and he often gets to uh, work on the weekends, and in fact, he gets so busy that someone will book a gig expecting to get EJ and his brother Pat will show up. Well, that's as shitty as uh, making the Expendables and having Frank Stallone show up in your place. <laughs> <laughs> you know, on the way I saw Willie Kulik. It, it's good to see you, sir. I can't see you now because the lights are so bad. Right. Hey, there he is. <laughs> it's funny because we've never actually met, but we're Facebook friends, you know, which is the, the modern way to do it these days. And um, there's one thing I want to make clear, though. You want a salon and a theater that are in the same building? No. Oh, okay. I was gonna say the only way that place would get more uh, more gayer is if a fucking Roman bath was in it. Wait, there is. <laughs> Everybody's a good sport tonight. Everybody's a good sport, including I have a friend here, Bob Belitsky. Bob Belitsky. Oh, Bob. Yes, there he is, my old friend. Hello, Bob. Hello. <sighs> yeah, I thought we'd hear a couple syllables out of you tonight, but um, I guess not. Huh? It's a rare treat. Uh, Jesus, uh, you're more whipped than the cast of the Help. <laughs> I'm glad you, uh, you escaped from the house today, though. Um, by the way, Elizabeth Smart and. Uh, J.C. Dugard said in the regards. <laughs> All right, but seriously, let's look at this dais. Yeah, really, let's look at this fucking dais. <laughs> well, I can't say enough good things about my friend and associate, Sam Falvo. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm getting a bit choked up. <laughs> nope, it's just gas. <laughs> anyway, Sam has been there for me at every step in every production, right from the beginning, too. Because when you're rolling camera on a throwback to black and white silent comedies or filming a raunchy sitcom as we're doing on Monday, you know, you have no idea, no idea how many times you say and ask yourself, where the hell can I find an Italian Marty Feldman? <laughs> Paul Winarski's here. I didn't know that much about Paul except for the fact that he was married, uh, so I decided to do some research. I logged onto Facebook, and here's what I found. Studied theater arts, okay, music, Broadway shows, TV shows, mod, <laughs> starring lesbian icon B. Arthur, <laughs> movies. The end of a thousand days. And then this uh, is followed by quotes uh, from Noel Coward, George Bernard Shaw, and Oscar Wilde. <laughs> and uh, it's true, it does say on uh, Facebook that you're married. <laughs> to a woman. Jesus Christ, Paul, even uh, Ricky Martin is less suspect than this. <laughs> the signs have been there for years, though. Um, you know, your wife Dawn's been acting out. Uh, I mean, the woman would take off her top to record a voicemail. Message. <laughs> Brian Hughes is here. Hello, Brian. What's more surprising is the fact that we've never met is that he works for Magic 93. That's great, man. I mean, I, I, I didn't even think, think they still had AM radio. Good for, good for you, buddy. When I'm getting my cavities filled or getting a colonic, I'll be sure to request you. Keep fighting the good fight, Casey Kasem. All right. Alicia Gregg, the distinguished theater critic from Electric City, is here. A lot of you may not know this, but we go way back. Yeah, Ali, uh, Heather Eibach, and uh, I are products of the North Pocono school system. Yeah, don't, don't, don't dare applaud for that. Uh, go Trojans. 
<laughs> no, really, go get some fucking trophies because all of your kids are already taller than me, and that's goddamn cramping my style. <laughs> Granted, they were taller than me as newborns, but God's laugh, God laughs at me, really. And sadly, he's the only one tonight. Jesus, that joke uh, bombed worse than the uh, Scranton Film Office. Oh. 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 You're over. <laughs> Attorney Chris O'Donnell is here. Imagine that. Clap for the ambulance chaser, none of the other guys. I love that. <laughs> I know where your heart's at. Imagine that, an Irish lawyer in Scranton. <laughs> I heard that it only cost Greg seven figures to be your friend. A six-pack and a retainer. <laughs> Everyone needs a good concierge, though, Chris. Uh, Lou Borletta. <laughs> when Hazleton started to, uh, you know, to flood back in the summer, he asked all the Hispanics to do their civic duty and go and lay down by the Susquehanna. Help him out, will you? Oh, God, please. It's a roast. It's a roast, people. Oh, you know, yeah. Well, thank you all for coming. Five minutes, did we say? You know, I got really excited because I heard that uh, Rick Dees was on the day. and I Rick Dees, and then Rich fucking Drees. I realized my mistake. Hey, discount Ben Elvis. You know, the only way you can redeem this night is by seeing a disco duck for me tonight, huh? Not happening. No shit, Sherlock. Uh, you know, Tom Flannery's here, Scranton's most prolific and uh, professional playwright. He was uh, the first to sign on for the roast. Yeah, go ahead and clap for him. Go ahead. Woo Over the last few months, um, I've seen two of Tom's pieces. Uh, actually, three, when you think about it. One about a severely traumatized war veteran from, with Parkinson's disease. One about students getting shot to death at Kent State. And one about a beautiful Irish girl who jumps to her death at the Triangle Shirtwaist uh, disaster. In his spare time, uh, spare time, Tom likes to have a laugh by hunting homeless people and watching his favorite comedy, Schindler's List in United 93. At least I had one, fellow. Shut up. Gary Kearns is here. Gary Kearns. She acted alongside Greg and was his co-host on a morning radio show. Now, when I say the name Dead Roll, most people think of the movie they starred in together, but it's actually the other names, uh, the other Carrie's nickname for Greg's penis. Oh. <laughs> I guess that's a great segue to talk about our man of the hour, Greg, Keith Edwards, Xavier, Tiberius, <laughs> Lee Harvey, John Wilkes, Foreign. Did I miss anything? No, I think you got them all. Great. Let me recap Greg's last couple of years for those of you keeping score. Oh, wait, you forgot Selznick. <laughs> I'll write the jokes, Jackass. <laughs> when are you going to start? <laughs> He's here all night. No, really. No, I, I don't have a home. He's a sweet pop, so let's drop the sidewalk. No, That's true. Part of the apartment in the back. <laughs> Let me recap Greg's last couple years for those of you keeping score at home, okay? He, he took a new job. Dealing cards at a casino. He finally found radio work. At a radio station in a casino. <laughs> and now he's taking it on the heel and toe to the biggest gaming mecca in the world, Las Vegas. <laughs> Greg, I have news for you. This really isn't a roast. It's an intervention. What's obviously <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen so much talent wasted on degenerate gambling since Bob Cadero and Paul Servino shit on taxpayers' money with the trouble with Cali. <laughs> Greg, do you remember how uh, we met? Uh, well, you probably want to strike it from your memory, but I can tell you anyway. Uh, radio personality Susie Quinn introduced us at a United Way luxury box catered right. uh, yeah, a Red right. Baron's ball game. That's right. And I asked who the homeless guy was. And <laughs> <laughs> she said that this was her actor friend Greg, who just finished a role in M. Night Shaman's Unbreakable, starring Bruce Willis and Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty impressive. You know, I don't know if a lot of you remember that movie, but it's about a, uh, you know, a blue collar, a white guy uh, beating the hell out of a black guy. Or as Greg liked to call it, one lap at least. Greg, your first 
us to credit on IMDb is for Urban Cowboy with John Travolta. Mm -hmm. And the most recent is a 20-minute fan film remake of Halloween made by teenagers. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ, uh, Christ, uh, Jesus Christ, Greg. Even Orson Welles drunk on Paul Masson last year, career trajectory. <laughs> Remember the French. Yes. <laughs> it's no secret that Greg did a lot of community film projects. Uh, you might remember him from such uh, cinematic gems as Hayden Bonics. <laughs> Don't clap that much. Born Pumped, and the ironically titled Who's Famous Now? <laughs> I say for the record, Jesus, the video of Rodney King beating had more production value than all those cinematic <laughs> games combined. And sadly, more entertainment value, too. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. But if, you, if you look at Greg's resume, you'll see Wet Hot American Summer. A comedy that, yes, yes, that's a great comedy. It, it, it also launched a, a thousand careers. It's like a who's who of actors on the A-list today. I mean, you played Paul Rudd's dad. Yeah. No, that's aggressive. But look at how your careers have paralleled. I mean, this summer, Rudd's going to be banging Jennifer Aniston in a blockbuster romantic comedy called Wonderlust, and you're going to be giving a male Jennifer Aniston impersonator a handjob out back at the Bellagio. 